Welcome to the Flora Sage Podcast, a place where we help you create a life you're excited about. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are going to talk about clearing some spiritual clutter. I'm going to ask you two questions. And these two questions are going to help to identify a couple of things in your spiritual path or journey and let you know, kind of clue you in as to if you have spiritual clutter or not. And this, these, this may surprise you. If you're new to my channel and this podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Flora Sage. For over 25 years, I've been helping people like you align into a life or a business that you are wildly obsessed with by helping you clear the nine types of clutter, keeping you from a life that you love. What are those nine types of clutter? They are mental, spiritual, emotional, digital, financial, daily, body, process, and environmental clutter. And today, we are going to look at clearing some spiritual clutter. So, spiritual clutter is a very real thing that a lot of people avoid simply because it's very triggering for a lot of people. But I'm going to go there today, and that's okay. I've done the work and I'm hoping that you will do the work as well because this will allow you to gain so much freedom in your life. I have two questions for you and the first question is going to be followed by a story. So the first question is, have you chosen your spiritual path in life or were you born into it? Many who are born into religion, accept that religion as their default path. Those who consciously choose their spiritual path often find a deeper fulfillment in those aspects of your life. So today I want you to really ask yourself for this first question, were you born into your spiritual path? Did you choose it? Does it feed your soul and does it give you peace? About a year ago, I was on YouTube and I frequently will watch videos from other faiths to just gain more knowledge about why people believe what they do so that I can have a better appreciation for my faith, but also not fear a spiritual practice that I'm not currently a part of. So I like to hear people's reasons. I like to watch their explanations of things and whatnot. And I stumbled upon a video of a gentleman, I believe his name, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, please forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but I believe his name is Joram Van Claveren, and he had a number one Christian podcast, and he was very anti-Islam, and so much so that he went out to write a book about why Islam and Muslims were bad. And he started to read these texts and read these books from these people and eventually ended up converting himself to become a Muslim. And listening to this interview and listening to this story, I was blown away because at one point in the interview, someone had asked him, so why did you decide to convert into Islam? And he said, wait a minute, I didn't convert to anything. I just chose Islam. I was born into being a Christian. That was my default. I chose, the only, the only religion that I chose was Islam. And I loved how he said that. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. And that allowed me to really stop and really look at and reflect at my own spiritual practice and say, have I actively chosen my spiritual path? And the answer is yes. I mean, this is something I've been an active seeker since I think forever, forever. I was, I was the kid in Catholic school who would always get in trouble for asking those tough questions that the nuns couldn't understand. Like I literally, I grew up Catholic and went to Catholic school, I always got in trouble because I was always asking the questions that the nuns would never answer. 
And so when I was in high school, I started to go to a born again Christian youth group. And my father, he said, you cannot do that. You, I will uh, no." And he was like, you're going to get brainwashed, all these other things. I was like, oh, whatever. So um, now in the Catholic church, you are baptized when you're a baby and you go to first communion, your first confession. Um, and then when you're a senior, at least at my church, you got confirmed. Well, that is when you're supposed to actively choose the Catholic faith. However, I didn't feel like it was a choice. I felt like it was an expectation that you, everybody, that was just kind of default. Everybody had to just be confirmed. So I felt like I was, that was still my default religion that I didn't actively get to choose. And when I was even seeking out going to the born again Christian youth group, when I was just seeking and just trying to see, you know, what else is out there, um, I was ostracized for it. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. And so from then on, I have been a seeker. I've always looked at myself and asked, you know, what do I believe about Muslims? What do I believe about the Jewish faith? What do I believe about people that are um, earth-based? What do I believe about people who are fill in the blank? And I've done so much research and dove so deep into all these different religions so that I could have that conscious clarity of what am I choosing for my faith. When I dove deep into these different spiritual practices and faiths, I found that every single one of them has that through line. That It's that through line of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And also free will. We all have free will. You can, you can choose to do A, you can choose to do B. But the free will trumps everything. And I also believe that's your, that it's your intention behind what it is that you do that dictates the energy that you have in your life. Whether you consider it positive or you consider it negative, whether you consider it good or bad. But it's truly how you use and utilize free will. So with that said... I have another question for you again. So that you're, my, my first question is, what path have you chosen in your life? Like, you know, is this your default or did you actually consciously choose your spiritual path? And when someone brings up their, their uh, faith, does it trigger you? Does it trigger you? Because sometimes if you get really, really triggered by someone else's faith, to me, that's an indicator that there's a little bit of uh, your spirituality that you still do not have clarity on. So when you find those pockets of unrest for you about your faith because of someone else's faith, Dig deeper into that. Lean into that. Figure out why it's triggering you. The second question I have for you today is what are you actually looking for in your spiritual practice? Now, some people might say, I'm looking for salvation. I'm looking for, I, you know, I, I want to go to heaven. I want to be part of God's chosen people or whatever. But that's part of it, yes. But another part of it is, are you looking for community? Are you looking for confirmation of questions that you have? Are you, are you looking for answers to lifelong questions that you have? I really want you to reflect on what you're actually looking for in the faith that you follow. Because when you're clear about the attributes that need to be present for your faith, it makes it so much easier to find that spiritual practice for you. It's kind of like when you go into a restaurant knowing what you want to eat. If you're clear that, well, I want something savory that's vegetarian so I could get a mushroom burger. Or if you want something cold and sweet, you could get a salad with cranberries and oranges. Now, some of you might be really pissed that I'm delineating religion down to figuring out if you want a mushroom burger or a cranberry orange salad. <laughs> But it really is that simple. And again, if this triggers you, there's something here for you to look at. Many people in various spiritual practices believe their faith is the one and only true faith. 
So if you believe that, this shouldn't trigger you. This should bring you peace knowing that, yes, I know I did choose my faith. Yes, I do know exactly what I want to get out of my practice. Perfect. Then this should not be triggering for you in any way, shape, or form. But for those of you who are really triggered and you're like, oh my gosh, why do I feel so triggered about this? Maybe you don't find peace in your practice. Maybe you don't find peace in the answers you're looking for in the faith that you follow. So what would happen if you found that in another practice? Or what would happen if you went into meditation with your higher power to ask for clarity about whatever it is that you're seeking? What would it look like for you to go speak to a elder in your faith about these questions that you have and about the triggers that you're feeling? It can only do nothing but either deepen your faith or give you that, that, that green light of saying, no, you know what? This faith isn't for me. This, this practice isn't for me. So then what do you do? You seek out something, a different spiritual faith that gives you that peace, that gives you those answers. And that's one of the things that this gentleman said is he said, every question I had as a Christian that couldn't be answered in the Christian faith with the Christian texts and the Christian elders, I found answers to multiple times in the Islamic texts and is the and in the Islamic faiths. So this is one of the things that I encourage you to do. And this is what I did for myself is I looked at these different faiths and I found that for me, I personally resonate more with earth-based spiritualism than any other faith on the planet simply because this is what God made. God made the solar system, the earth, the seasons. And growing up in a home where my father, every, every holiday season, especially on like the winter solstice, he would pull out his book about um, his, his garden, his one acre garden, and he would plan the crops that he would have the next year. And he would look at the seeds that he had. And it's very metaphorical for the life that you have. It's like, what, what is the life? What is the year that I have to come? What, what seeds do I have to plant in the spring that I'm going to harvest in the fall? What good things am I doing and cultivating in my life that will allow me to flourish in the future so much so that I have so much overflow that I can be of service to the people around me, that I can donate this extra, extra abundance and extra things that I have so that I can support my community as well. This whole podcast episode is about giving yourself permission to seek your truth, to seek the truth of what you believe, what you're looking for in your spiritual practice, and allowing yourself to understand that while there's many, many faiths, that do believe that there's one creator. And I do believe that each faith allows people in different areas of their their evolution to pick a faith that brings them closer to the higher power in whatever way that looks. And again, that universal source through line is there in all of them, in all of them. I'm just sharing with you so that you can see that there are people that, that practice other paths that find peace. And the key is, do you find peace in your chosen path if you have found your chosen path? That's all of this is. That's all this is. And this helps to clear the clutter. Because again, when you give yourself permission to look at what triggers you, that's where that growth and healing and deepening of your spiritual practice comes into play. I have many prayers that I say. Many of them are mantras. I do transcendental meditation. I also do many Sanskrit mantras. I also have some Catholic prayers. I have some Christian prayers that I do. Some people may consider that blasphemous. And that's okay. That's not my thing. If you, I, What your opinion is, is none of my business. But I'm here to share with you a little glimpse of this 
so that you hopefully will be able to get and have that deeper connection with your faith. There are some Christian passages from the Bible that I absolutely love. One of my favorite authors, Neville Goddard, breaks the Bible down into like the law of attraction type mentality. And there is biblical quotes throughout the entire book. And that book, The Complete Reader by Neville Goddard, is my Bible. That is what I use on a daily basis to gain guidance. And again, that could be blasphemous to some. That's fine. It's not blasphemous to me. I find peace. I find such a deep connection with source energy when I use that book. So again, all of this is to help you clear spiritual clutter that may be coming up for you during this holiday season. Again, today is winter solstice, um, the day that this is being released. So I celebrate winter solstice. Again, it's because what was created. It's that perfect time during the year where it's the shortest day, longest night. Deepen your faith by leaning into what triggers you. And if what I've said resonates with you and you're like, yeah, you know what? This is absolutely the perfect opportunity for me to to dig deeper into my own spiritual practice so that I can know it inside and out so that no matter what anybody else says about any other practice, I know my faith is unshakable. Then what I've set out to do here has been accomplished. We are here to clear out clutter and everyone's clutter is different. Everyone's clutter is different. I'm 48. I've been clearing through my spiritual clutter since I was about 16, actually 15. And it has been very hard, but very, very rewarding. So ask yourself those two questions. What do you want to get out of your faith? And did you choose your faith? And I think that you're going to be very pleasantly surprised when you come up with the answers, when you feel that peace in your heart, it's going to be life-changing. I love it. So I hope this serves you today. Remember, all it takes is a clear vision of where you are, where you want to go, and the willingness to take a baby one degree shift every single day to get there and to align into a life that you love. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. All links mentioned are in today's show notes.